Pensacola is the westernmost city in the panhandle of Florida, first established back in 1559. It was the first Spanish settlement in what would eventually become the continental United States. Pensacola is now home to one of the largest seaports on the Gulf of Mexico, the country's first Naval Air Force base, and it's the home of the famous Blue Angels Naval Flight Team. Pensacola is also known for its miles and miles of pristine white sand beaches and emerald green water, which makes it a favorite for spring breakers and snowbirds alike. Known as the city of five flags for the five governments that have ruled the city over its five centuries of existence, that nickname also carries over to a half mile ribbon of pavement. One of the most historic short tracks in the country, Five Flags Speedway, home of the famous Snowball Derby. And tonight, the setting for the season opener for the Arkham Menard Series East, it's the Pensacola 200 presented by Team Construction. And it's coming up next live here on Flow Racing. Good evening, everybody. My name is Charlie Crawl. I'll have all the action for you from tonight's Pensacola 200 here at Five Flags Speedway. We started out a little damp earlier today, but it has been a sun-splashed afternoon here in the panhandle of Florida, and it's going to be a picture-perfect night for racing. We had a high temperature, about 78 degrees earlier this afternoon. We're going to dip into the low 70s as we go racing tonight, and how about this? Absolutely no chance of rain. As we see the drivers buckling in their race cars tonight, we're going to kick off the 37th season of racing for the Arkham Menard Series East, a series that dates all the way back to 1987 when Joey Carafas won the inaugural series championship. Over the years, he's been joined by some of the biggest names in stock car racing, including Legends of the Northeast, Ricky Craven, Mike Stefanik, and Andy Santer, budding superstars like Ryan Truex and Sammy Smith, and how about some of these Cup Series names? Joey Logano, Kyle Larson, and William Byron, all former champions here in the East. Who's going to be the next driver to add their name to that distinguished list of champions? We'll start that battle to find out who will be the 2023 champion right here tonight. We do have 15 teams on hand to, co to kick off the season. They're going to do it on one of the trickiest racetracks in the country. Five, flat, five Flag Speedway is fast, it's slick, it's worn out, and it's tough on tires. Drivers will be on the radio all night long with their crew chiefs and their spotters yelling for new tires, but they're only going to have one chance to come on down pit road and take tires. That's going to come at that five minute break at the halfway point. Good looking crowd on hand tonight. We're just a few minutes away from cranking the engines to get things started here tonight. There's a good look at turns one and two at Five Flags Speedway. See some of that worn out pavement that I was talking to right there. It's been patched over the years. It has been sealed over the years, but it is that same pavement. As I hear engines rumbling in the background, the command has been given. Cars roaring to life down on the grid. Good looking field of race cars here on hand. Here's a good look at Luke Fenhouse in the new Pinnacle Racing Group Chevrolet. Luke, the reigning Cars Tour Pro Late Model Champion. We'll talk about that team quite a bit throughout the course of tonight. How about this guy, Tyler Reif? Picked up a win in the Arkham and Art Series combo race with the Arkham and Arts West out at Phoenix Raceway last time out. Not bad for a 15-year-old. We'll talk about Tyler here shortly as well. There's LeVar Scott, fourth place finisher at Daytona International Speedway. Back in the month of February, LeVar going to chase after the East Series title here in 2023. Driving the number six for Max Siegel's Rev Racing team. On Indorani, that number 15, the gear wrench Toyota for Venerini Motorsports. Gone going to be a busy guy this year, chasing two championships here. In the Arkham and Art Series platform, East and West. Good look at the spotters up on the roof. There's Wayne Peters. We'll give Wayne a shout out. Wayne in the red cap right there. Car owner of the number 06. My favorite guys in the Arkham and Art Series garage area. As we get ready to roll, four pace laps here this evening. 
Why don't we go ahead and take a look at tonight's race analysis for the Pensacola 200 presented by Team Construction. We're going to go 200 laps. That's 100 miles around the worn out half mile here at Five Flags Speedway. The corner's banked at a healthy 15 degrees. That's going to allow the drivers to carry a lot of speed through these corners. We're going to have one five minute break tonight at or around the halfway point. Teams will have four tires in the pit box to use at that halfway point. Looks like all the cars have rolled from the grid. Seen a handful of Arkham Menard Series East and Arkham Menard Series races here at Five Flags Speedway over the years, and we've seen a NASCAR Cup Series race way back in the 1950s, won by Herb Thomas, fabulous Hudson Hornet. Why don't we take a look at tonight's Bounty Rookie Spotlight driver, a guy we've already talked about. He's had a huge start to his 2023 season. Tyler Reif, driver of that number 41 Power Gen Components Ford for team owners Chris Loudon and Tony Jackson. Tyler surprised everybody with a huge win in that Arkham Menards Series and Arkham Menards West Combo race at Phoenix three weeks ago, becoming the 36th driver since 1979 to win an Arkham Menards Series race in his first ever series start. He is your Arkham Menards West Championship standings leader. He's going to chase after not only that West Championship, but he's going to chase the Arkham Menard Series East Championship here in 2023 as well. We'll keep a close eye on Tyler Reif and that number 41 car throughout the course of tonight as our Bounty Rookie Spotlight driver for his first ever East Series win in his first East Series start. We'll see if he can back up that performance at Phoenix Raceway here this evening. We jump ahead one row. There he is, tonight's General Tire Pole Award winner, William Swalich in the number 18 Starkey Sound Gear Toyota for Joe Gibbs Racing. William timed in at 17.220 seconds. That translates to 104.530 miles per hour around the half mile here at Five Flags Speedway. William's got a lot of knowledge of this racetrack, a lot of experience here in super late models over the course of the past couple of years. He's making his Arkham Menard Series East debut here this evening, but he also picked up a pole in that Arkham Menards race out at Phoenix Raceway a couple of weeks back. Let's see, see if we can hear from tonight's General Tire Pole Award winner. Yeah, we, had a, we have a really fast uh, Toyota Camry here today. I'd like to thank uh, Starkey and Sound Gear and the crew for giving me a really good car. I think we've got a lot of confidence coming into this event. Uh, the team won this last year, so the car is really good right now, so we'll see where it's at in the race. This is a 200-lap race, though. How important is starting up front for such a long event? Yeah, I think it's important to set my own pace, and if everybody follows, I think it can go our way and how my tires uh, want it. And that'll lead us into tonight's general tire starting grid. As we said, William Swalich in that number 18 will start P1 tonight with two-time Five Flag Speedway Sportsman Champion Jake Finch in the number 20 alongside on the front row. Luke Fenhaus, Tyler Reif will go from row number two. LeVar Scott and Sean Hingarani back in row three. Tanner Arms in the 95 car alongside R.J. Smotherman in the number 46 will be back in row four. And a great qualifying run for Zachary Tinkle. He and Tim Monroe round out our top 10. Ed Pompa and Dallas Frew back in row six. Rita Goulet and Nate Muller back in row seven. And Dale Scherer will round out our 15 car starting grid. Lights off on the pace vehicle. He is already down on pit road. As we get ready to come to the green. First time in 2023 for the Arkham Art Series East. It is time to rock, roll, and rumble here at Five Flag Speedway. And no surprise, William Swalich will get the jump at the green. Jake Finch dropping into the second position. Battle on for third. 
Luke Fenhouse to the inside. He's going to drift up the racetrack just a little bit right there. Tyler Reif going to get the better of that battle as we come to complete lap number one. A couple of talented teenagers going at it for that third position. Benhouse in that brand new Pinnacle Racing Group Chevrolet. He drifts up the racetrack again in turn three. Just about got into the 41 car. Tyler Reif will take over the third spot as they fall into single file formation now. Wallace with a five car length advantage over the, this battle now for second. Jake Finch, Tyler Reif. Luke Fenhouse, there's a good look at LeVar Scott in the number six. He's got some pressure from Sean Hingarani there in the 15 car. Field now falling into single file formation. There's the leader, William Sawalich from the pole. There's second, Jake Finch. He's got a lot of laps here at Five Flag Speedway time sportsman division champion here at this racetrack the phoenix racing team owned by his father james finch from a partnership of sorts with venerini motorsports that's why you see jake in that number 20 for venerini motorsports here this weekend tyler rife holding on to third on Hingarani there in the 15 car truck, starting to put some pressure on LeVar Scott here in the early going. Ooh, closing in on the back bumper through turns one and two. Hingarani now going to dip to the inside. Can he get alongside into three? Hingarani dipping those left side tires down below the yellow line. He will take over that position. Ooh, Sean Hingarani up into fifth. John had a strong start to the West Series season going out at Phoenix Raceway a couple of weeks back, but actually got into it with Tyler Reif very early in the going. Tyler went for a long spin, backed it into the outside wall, actually recovered from that spin to go out and win the race. We didn't think Sean had as much damage to that car as Tyler did, but it turns out a lot of damage to the right front suspension of that vehicle actually hampered his chances quite a bit. So Sean Hingarani looking to get a good clean run going here in the Arkham and Art Series East season opener. He's starting to close in on Luke Fenhouse now. 15 car looking awfully solid here in the opening 10 laps. Fenhouse another driver with them with some super late model experience here at Five Flag Speedway. Made a couple of starts in the Snowball Derby. As the driver is running second, third, fourth, and fifth. Running nose to tail on the racetrack, trying to keep William Sawalich in their sights. Looks like the 41 car, Tyler Reif, might be a little quicker than Jake Finch is at this point in the run. Trying to find his way around. Finch just fast enough to keep this train behind him. We talked about how abrasive the racing surface is here at Five Flags Speedway. Qualifying times Earlier today in the 17.4 second range, here we are some 15 laps into the run. William Sawalich's lap that time around 19.2 seconds as we see Luke Fenhouse sneaking underneath Tyler Reif. Fenhouse taking over the third spot. Tyler Reif back to fourth. A lot of tire management going to be the name of the game here in this first 100 lap segment of our 200 lap Pensacola 200. That battle between Fenhouse and Tyler Reif 
allowed Jake Finch just a little bit of breathing room. He's got a couple of car lengths on that battle right there. The Wallach has opened up about a 10 car length, maybe 15 car lengths over Jake Finch in second. There's the two drivers we were talking about. They had a little meeting of the minds there at Phoenix Raceway early in the going. Tyler Reif in the 41, Sean Hingarani in the 15. Even though Tyler backed it into the outside wall, Sean actually the one who came out on the short end of that stick. Team owner Billy Venerini said that they absolutely destroyed the right front suspension on that 15 car. laps other will make it 20 laps in the books working lap 21 a very quick start here at five flag speedway the top five starting to separate themselves just a little bit William Sawalich stretching out that advantage over Jake Finch just a little over one second in hand Luke Fenhouse running in third Tyler Reif and Sean Hingarani now a little distance between those two cars Here's our General Tire Pole Award winner right there, William Sawalich. Making the move around the 12 car, that's Tim Monroe. Tim substituting for D.L. Wilson in that number 12 car here tonight. D.L. injured in a pretty heavy impact in the late stages out at Phoenix Raceway a couple of weeks back. We'll see DL back behind the wheel of that number 12 car before too long. A couple of the cars running decals in support of DL. So hurry back, DL. We look forward to having you back here with us very, very soon as we look at the battle, continuing battle between Tyler Reif and Sean Hingarani. Tyler looked like he was a little quicker than Jake Finch maybe about 10 laps ago. That 41 car kind of dropping just to tick off the pay, the leader's pace. He has lost quite a bit of ground bet, uh, between himself and not only Jake Finch, but Luke Fenhouse. Again, tire management going to be key here in the opening stages. One set of tires in the pits to be used at that lap 100 midway break. You're going to have to get these tires, this set of tires, to last the first 100, and then you're going to have to get that second set of tires to last the second 100. Keeping an eye on William Sawalich, our leader, down in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. William stretching the advantage. Now maintaining that advantage, about one second between himself and Jake Finch. Luke Fenhouse not able to really reel in. Jake at this point, still about three quarters of a second between Luke Fenhouse and Jake Finch. And then you got this battle, the battle for fourth. Sean Hingarani stalking Tyler Reif. And Tyler, what did we talked about it? What a storybook week he had at Phoenix Raceway. Picking up that win. Coming from a couple of laps down working his way through the field and in the final 50 laps 
cracking down. William Sawalich. As now we see Sean Hingarani looking to the inside of Tyler Reif. He's going to power off turn four to take over that fourth position. We were talking about why tire management will be important. Got a little sidetracked there. Very, very abrasive racing surface here at iFlag Speedway. We talked about lap times falling off. 18.7 seconds that time for leader William Sawalich. So about 1.3 seconds slower than qualifying. Just 33 laps in. So tire management going to be key on this very abrasive racing surface. And right now, William Swalich doing exactly what he needs to do, keeping that car straight off of these corners, not spinning those tires, not abusing them in any way. As we start to reach the one quarter mark already here at Five Flag Speedway. Swalich had a good night going out at Phoenix a few weeks back. Started from the pole, was in contention to win. Got a little nudge on a late race restart. Picked up some damage and dropped him all the way back in the field. I believe he finished just outside the top 10, but has rebounded nicely here at Five Flag Speedway. Dominated in practice, won the pole in qualifying, and now holding on to a one second advantage over Jake Finch, that driver right there. Work lap number 40. It's a good look at Jake Finch. A lot of experience here at this particular racetrack over the years. Two time track champion in the outlaw bodied sportsman division here. Those are pretty cool looking race cars. Of course, Jake's father, James Finch, a Longtime owner in the NASCAR Cup Series picked up a win with Brad Keselowski at Talladega Super Speedway back in 2009. A lot of NASCAR Xfinity Series success and some success here in the Arkham and Art Series platform. Back in the 90s, remember that number one car with Jeff Purvis dominant on the Super Speedways in the early to mid 1990s. James's young son Jake. Looking to make his name behind the wheel. And here comes Luke Fenhouse in that 28 car, the Pinnacle Racing Group Chevrolet. Luke carrying the number 28 on the side of that car. As we see some lap traffic directly in front of the leaders. This is going to allow second and third to close in right on that back bumper of William Sawalich. Ed Pompa in the 10, Tanner Arms in the 95, Zachary Tinkle in the 11. Those cars all doing some battle. Doing some battling, I should say, directly in front of our leaders. And now you got the top three running nose to tail off of turn two. So Wallach navigated that lap traffic like a veteran. Nicely done as he's going to move to the outside of Zachary Tinkle in that number 11 car. Zachary teaming up with Andy Hillenberg in the fast track racing team here in 2023. Good looking paint scheme on that number 11 car. Zachary spent some time working a trade show up in Orlando this week. He's been down in the state of Florida for a number of days. Got a time a little envious of Zachary Tinkle vacationing, working vacation down here in Florida as Jake Finch and Luke Fenhouse move on by. There was a good look at Zachary Tinkle in that beautiful black and purple number 11. Ooh, Tanner Arms power sliding it through turn two right there. Zachary out of Speedway, Indiana. Racing, racing for rescues. Toyota Camry. Zachary, one of the more unique characters 
in the infield, but somebody I look forward to seeing each and every week. We go racing here with the Arkham Iron Series East, and there's Tanner Arms making his East Series debut here tonight. Car looking a little skatey. He's had a handful of steering wheel a couple of times. We've seen him on screen. The Man Motorsports, number 95 Toyota. Tanner having a good run here in the early going. Sitting back in the ninth position. Let's jump back up to the front of the field. There's the distance between William Sawalich and Jake Finch. Now that we've navigated that traffic, he's opened it back up. To put three quarters of a second between himself and Jake Finch there in second. And I have a feeling William's going to be getting some coaching from the pit box and the spotter stand to not drive that car any harder than he needs to. As we see that battle for second, Jake Finch and Luke Fenhaus. Fenhaus in the number 28. Of course, that the number of the old Rainier Racing team, longtime team owner Harry Rainier carried the number 28 on his cars. Dale Yarbrough had a lot of success. Buddy Baker, Bobby Allison had a lot of success for that team back in the late 70s and early 80s. Harry's son, Lauren Rainier, part of the ownership and management group of this team. Lauren spotting up on the roof for young Luke Fenhaus here tonight. Bringing the family number along with him. Of course, the number 28 was on Benny Parsons' car when Benny became the first driver to break the 200 mile per hour barrier in qualifying down at Talladega Super Speedway back in 1982. That was a Harry owned automobile as well. So, a lot of history. That number 28 car, and Harry himself owned cars in the Arkham and Art Series. In the late 1960s, early 1970s as well. Catch some of the slower traffic at the back of the field. There's R.J. Smotherman in the number 46 car. And I say the back of the field, R.J. having a pretty solid night in the seventh position. R.J. in the second Loudon Jackson racing entry here tonight. Had a tough week out at Phoenix. They had a clutch problem all day long. Couldn't quite get that car diagnosed. They decided, you know, we didn't really have a good solid start to our season, so we're going to load up and come on out to Five Flags and see how we do out there. And right now, R.J. Smotherman having a really nice night and sitting in that seventh position. There's the top three. So while it's again just about Eight tenths of a second, the gap. Over Jake Finch in second. Fenhaus doing a real nice job. Making his debut in the Arkham and Art Series platform here this weekend. First time driving one of these big, heavy Arca cars. Wallach leads off at turn four as we come across to complete lap 61, working lap 62. Clean and green to this point here in the Pensacola 200. Presented by Team Construction. And again, keeping an eye on lap times as we follow on that talking point of the tire wear. It's again, tire management going to be very key, particularly in the second half of this race. Qualifying times in the 17.4 second bracket right now. William Sawalich, Jake Finch, Luke Fenhaus, all in the 19-0 to 19-1 second bracket. So about a second and a half from where we were in qualifying earlier this afternoon. Right now, I think all three of these drivers just trying to get to that halfway point. 
Don't want to do anything to overextend the race car. Don't want to put themselves at a bad spot. Need to get to that halfway break. Come and make some adjustments, put some fresh tires on, and then it's going to be race time. Of course, William Sawalic driving that number 18 for Joe Gibbs Racing. That is the same team that carried Ty Gibbs to the Arkham Menard Series Championship back in 2020, uh, excuse me, 2021. Also carried Sammy Smith to a pair of Arkham Menard Series East Championships. Work around Ed Pompa in the 10. That's going to allow Luke Fenhaus to close in right on the back bumper of Jake Finch, and he's not going to waste any time. He's going to dive underneath, underneath Jake Finch there in turns one and two. Move Luke Fenhaus up into second. Fenhaus saw the opportunity, and he jumped on it. Move him into second. Let's see if he's got a car that can track down William Sawalich up at the front of the field. Right now, Luke Fenhaus about 1.1 seconds off the back bumper of that automobile right there. Your leader, William Sawalich. Jake Finch dropping into that third position. Jake, if you remember, made his East Series debut here last season. Started from the pole, had a good run going. A little bit of tough luck late in the day. And a very impressive debut and right now doing a nice job holding out of that third position as we pass the 70 lap mark here still clean and green Pensacola Arca 200 presented by team construction live here on floor racing Ed Pompa in the number 10. Saw Ed go a lap down a few laps back. And there's Sean Hingarani. Sean holding on to the fourth position in the number 15. Sean dipped his toes in the water a little bit last year. Made a handful of starts in the Arkham Menards West. Jumped in with both feet here in 2023. Decided he was going to run not only for the West Series Championship, but he was going to compete for the East Series title as well. And I'll tell you what, folks, we saw a little bit of sparks out from underneath that car when he went through turns one and two last time around. Let's see if we can see those sparks out from underneath the back of that machine this time by. Don't see it that time by. Yeah, you never want to see a, you expect these cars to bottom out. Of course, we're running at night, so you'll see the sparks every time that chassis drags the racetrack, but you don't expect to see that prolonged amount of sparks. And I thought we did see a bit of prolonged streak of sparks out of the back of that 15 car, but looks like that might have been a one and done type situation. And there's the driver holding on to the fifth position, Tyler Reif, just 15 years of age. Saw him make a handful of West Series starts last year as well. Of course, he's the younger brother of Tanner Reif. Tanner picked up a couple of West Series wins last year. Driving for longtime team owner Bob Brancati. Picked up the Bounty Rookie of the Year award for the West Series. And right now, Tyler, our Bounty Rookie Spotlight driver here tonight. He's going to chase after that West Series championship and the East Series title here in 2023. how close Tyler getting to that inside retaining wall as he comes off a of turn four. 
Not a lot of distance between the race car and the wall right there, but that's where you want to run. That is exactly the groove you want to be in here at Five Flat Five Flag Speedway. As we now start to approach the halfway point. Again, we will see caution flag come out at or around lap 100 here tonight. Give the teams five minutes to change tires, add fuel, make any adjustments, make any repairs they need as we check in on LeVar Scott. LeVar in the number six car, the Rev Racing Chevrolet for Team Motor Max Siegel. LeVar having a steady night so far here this evening, holding on to the sixth position. He's going to have to get up and go, though, because there is our leader, William Swalich, about a straightaway behind. Tell you what, LeVar, one of the hardest working guys I have seen come along in a long time. He has put in his time. He has been part of the Max Siegel driver development program with Rev Racing for a couple few years now, anyhow. Coming to the racetrack, trying to help out any way he can. He has really gone to school, uh, not only with uh, drivers, but with mechanics and engineers and spotters and he has just absorbed everything he can over the course of the last couple of seasons put it all to good use at Daytona International Speedway back in February led I think he led 14 laps and was in the lead with just a handful of laps to go and of course things got a little racy there in the final few laps Bar still able to come home with a fourth place finish in his debut race as we see the leader there's William Sowalich tracking down LeVar Scott and Tyler Reif it's a little smoke out of the number six car it seemed to impede the performance of that automobile but still something we'll keep an eye on here as we approach the midway point LeVar wants to get a little racy because if William Sowalich passes both of these cars, only one will be in position to pick up the free pass here at the midway point. Right now, LeVar Scott going to move past Tyler Reif, and he's going to bring the top two. And look at Luke Fenhouse. Fenhouse has tracked down William Sowalich. Working through some lap traffic, and we have a battle for the lead. Tyler Reif now a lap down. Bar Scott's going to have a little bit of breathing room if he does go a lap down because still will be in position for the free pass just 10 laps from now when we go to the halfway point midway break here we see the two leaders William Sawalich and Luke Fenhouse work underneath LeVar Scott now we're going to see what Fenhouse has as we close in on the midway point we've been talking about tire management throughout the first half of this race. Benhouse wants to see how racy he can get. We'll have another 100 laps to go once we go back racing. Benhouse knocking on the back door. A couple of teenagers with a lot of late model experience and a lot of laps here at Five Flags Speedway. Swalich out of Eden Prairie, Minnesota. And Luke Fenhouse out of Wausau, Wisconsin. A couple of teenagers out of the upper Midwest going to battle here in the panhandle of Florida. Arkham and Art Series East season opener. Working lap 95, just five to go until we reach the midway point. Swalich now starting to give himself a little breathing room. Now about a half a second in hand over Luke Fenhouse.
Boy, Fenhouse really did make a charge there. Trying to reel in the leader and maybe make a pass, but right now Sawalich able to hold that charge off as he's going to put Smotherman another lap down here with just a couple of laps to go here in the first half. Pensacola Arca 200. Smotherman with a handful there through turns one and two. An impressive performance here in the first half of this race by Luke Fenhouse. Picked up a few positions. Patiently worked his way through the field. Put himself in position to challenge that young man, William Sawalich. Looks like Sawalich will lead off a turn four. He'll look at the cross flags. Next time by. Once we get all the lead lap cars across the start finish line, we should see the caution flag. There's the cross flags halfway home here at the Pensacola Arca 200 presented by Team Construction. William Swalich has led them all from the pole. Luke Fenhouse in that second position. Jake Finch saw Sean Hingarani rounding out the top five as there we see the caution flag. The first time today. As we as we have reached the midway point. But we will put the field behind the pace car. And then bring everybody down and let them go to work for five minutes, changing tires, adding fuel, making adjustments. And then we'll run to the finish. What an impressive performance by William Sowalich. Leading all 103 laps so far from the pole. get everybody organized behind the pace car and get our free pass driver moved back around and into position. That is going to be LeVar Scott. Him back tail end of the field where he belongs and we'll, we'll bring everybody down pit road, give them the opportunity to make their tire changes and their adjustments. Set to go back racing. We will have 93 laps remaining. There's LeVar in the number six. open there you see the green flag indicating pit road is now open so we will bring the field down and give them their five minutes don't expect a lot of changes on that number 18 car William Sawal has been pretty solid all night long don't know what kind of changes Shane Huffman and the crew will make on that number 28 car. That cars look pretty solid too. Once the final car has moved into position, ARCA officials will signify the five minute clock has started and we'll let these crews leap to work. Jackson, do we need to take a break or anything? Hey, hey. 
And you saw the tire changers leap to work, but you cannot change tires and add fuel at the same time. So you wave the tire changers off. On the 18 car, we're already changing right side tires on the 28. We've seen that penalty get called a couple of times throughout the course of last year. Cannot change tires and add fuel at the same time. Good to see that 28 car watching live here on Flow. Their computer monitor on their pit box. Appreciate the support down there, boys, as Shane Huffman led team going to work now on the left side of that 28 car. There's the work going on the left side of the 18 car for our leader, William Sawalich. Chassis adjustment on the Jake Finch number 20. And they're going to make a suspension adjustment on the right front. On Hingarani's number 15 car. with 98 laps yet to run. We should have five cars on the lead lap. That young man, William Swalich, will be shown as the leader. Luke Fenhouse, Jake Finch, Sean Hingarani, and LeVar Scott will round out the five lead lap cars. That young man, Tyler Reif, will be back in sixth. You see that decal I was talking about on the A post right there. You see that decal in support of D.L. Wilson. D.L., of course, injured in crash out at Phoenix Raceway a few weeks back. D.L., we're thinking about you. Looking forward to have you back here with us as soon as you're feeling better. Looking forward to having you back behind the wheel of that number 12 car. Tyler Reif, our Bounty Rookie Spotlight driver tonight, currently back in sixth. He's the only driver shown one lap down. So if we get a quick caution, we'll be able to pick up the free pass and rejoin the tail end of the lead lap. Tyler going to run for championships. The Arkham Menards East and Arkham Menards West. Not a lot of work being done on that number 18 car, just as I thought. Mark McFarland and that crew pretty happy with how that number 18 car was handling throughout the course of that 100 lap run. Going to try to cool things down a little bit. Get some air over the radiator, get some air in that engine compartment. Get some air in the cockpit. Talked about what a beautiful day it was. 78 degrees this afternoon. Hasn't really cooled off too much here. Drop into the low 70s. Still a little warm inside the cockpit here tonight. As William will refire the engine and move back out onto the racetrack. First one to complete his service. Everybody lined up back on the back stretch and then roll the field.
let's take a look at our Menards schedule for the Arca Menard Series East. Next race on the calendar for the East Series, the General Tire 125 coming up April 28th up at Dover Motor Speedway. Then we'll head to the Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway for the Music City 200 coming up on May 13th. And here's the one that I've had circled on my calendar all winter long. May 20th up at the Level Pebble Flat Rock Speedway, the tight quarter mile bull ring. One of my home tracks. Looking forward to that one, 150 laps of action. And then we will move into the four combination races with the Arkham and Art Series. Iowa Speedway on July 15th. Lucas Oil Indianapolis Raceway Park on August 11th. Milwaukee Mile August 27th. And Bristol Motor Speedway on September 14th. You can watch Dover, Nashville, and Flat Rock right here live on Flow Racing. Appreciate the support of our friends over at Team Construction. Presenting sponsor of tonight's race here at Five Flags Speedway. Longtime supporters of ARCA Racing here in Pensacola, Florida. Appreciate their support here tonight. As the pace car dips down onto pit road, we're ready to go back racing. William Sawalich and Luke Fenhouse up on the front row. Green flag back out. It's time to go to battle for the final 95 laps here at Five Flags Speedway. And immediately, Jake Finch to the inside of Luke Fenhouse. Battle on for second. Finch gonna sneak past Luke Fenhouse to take over that second spot. Now let's see if Finch has anything for William Sawalich. We saw a big time chassis adjustment on the number 20 car. We also saw an adjustment on Sean Hingarani's number 15. The Venerini Motorsports cars looking sporty as we see Tyler Reif knifing his way through traffic. He's got to dispatch Zachary Tinkle there as he's trying to work his way back up and get himself back up on the lead lap. Now here comes Jake Finch in the 20 car. Battle on for the lead and the battle on for third. Luke Fenhouse with a mirror full of Sean Hingarani down the back stretch. Hingarani going to dip to the inside. Couldn't make it stick down into turn three. This is a very familiar sight we have seen throughout the Arkham and Art Series platform over the course of the last couple of seasons. The JGR number 18 going to battle with the Venerini Motorsports number 20 as there's the battle for third. Hingarani to the inside. Luke Fenhouse to the outside. Of course, we saw the Venerini team making a big change to the right front suspension on the number 15 car. Looks like it's paid off so far here in the early going of the second half here at Five Flags Speedway. Sean Hingarani up to third. And again, just like we saw in the opening 100 laps here tonight, this abrasive racing surface here at Five Flags Speedway, tire management, particularly here in the early going, tire management will be key. So we have a long ways yet to go. Still over 85 laps of racing yet to go here. Don't want to burn these general tires up too early on this cheese grater racing surface here at Five Flag Speedway. Working to the outside of Ed Pompa. Here comes Hingarani. That 15 car jumping to life here. Swalich stretching out the advantage ever so slightly now. About three quarters of a second over Jake Finch in second. Finch about to have his hands full with his teammate, Sean Hingarani. 
Top three cars on your screen off of turn four. Oh, Hingarani is there. The battle for second is on. Pinch starting to reel in. William Sawalich. Everybody knows the tail off of turn two. This is that part of the race where I'm going to borrow a phrase from good old DW, Darrell Waltrip. It's time to be patiently aggressive. You see the leader in your sights. You want to get up there and you want to race with them, but you still have to be patient. Not quite time to overextend the equipment. Not quite time to burn the tires off of the race car, but got to keep that leader in sight. Joe Gibbs, number 18, that carried Ty Gibbs to the Arkham and Art Series National Championship, leading the way over the Venerini Motorsports number 20. Saw that car, those two cars. They spirited battle for the owner's title in the Arkham and Art Series last year. Sammy Smith in the 18 and Jesse Love in the number 20. That battle coming to a head up at Toledo Speedway. Some tempers after that one. These two teams, pretty heated rivals over the course of the last few seasons. And right now, William Sawalich showing the way in the number 18. Led every lap from the pole here tonight. The two Venerini Motorsports teammates running in the second and third position. Luke Fenhouse back in third. A couple of seconds, make it three seconds off the pace. The top three automobiles as they work around Ed Pompa. How about this battle, RJ Smotherman, Zachary Tinkle, this battle for position. Eighth and ninth on the racetrack. Ooh, RJ's car bouncing over the bumps there in turns three and four. Look at Zachary Tinkle getting racy. In the number 11 car, good run so far tonight for Zachary Tinkle. It's also indicated that he's going to compete for the Arkham and Art Series East Championship here in 2023. Tanner Arms in the 95 car. This is a three-way battle for position. All three of these race cars on the same lap. Seventh, eighth, and ninth on the racetrack. Tanner Arms in the 95 car, the Mark Noble owned Man Motorsports Toyota. Having a good run here tonight. There's the Loudon Jackson Racing. Number 46, RJ Smotherman. Of course, Zachary Tinkle driving for 1995 Arkham and Art Series National Champion Andy Hillenberg and his fast track. High performance racing team. A good look at the number 46 car for RJ Smotherman, another talented teenager. Saw him make a couple of starts out west last season. RJ out of Pahrump, Nevada. Same neighborhood as his team owner, Chris Loudon. Chris, one of the unique characters of the Arkham and Art Series West. Good to see him pick up 
a big win as a team owner out there at Phoenix a couple of weeks back. There's the battle for second and third. They've dropped a little bit, of, given up a little bit of ground to William Sawalich. He's about uh, eight tenths of a second ahead of Jake Finch now in second. Finch still with a mirror full. Sean Hingarani in the number 15 car. William navigating through this battle for position we were just talking about. Comes Jake Finch and Sean Hingarani. They're going to move to the outside of Zachary Tinkle now through turns three and four. RJ Smotherman, good move right there by RJ. He's going to drop to the bottom side of the racetrack and give the faster cars the groove. Sean not able to get his way past Zachary Tinkle right there through turns one and two. So he's going to give up a couple of car lengths there to Jake Finch in the number 20 car. R.J. Smotherman, he's going to move to the top side of the racetrack and give the groove to Jake Finch. That sportsmanlike move right there by R.J. Smotherman in the 46. Look at this. Here comes Luke Fenhouse in the 28 car. So we checked on that interval back about 20 laps ago. Luke Fenhouse was 3.8 seconds behind. William Sawalich. Now as we approach lap 140, Luke Fenhouse now just 2.2 seconds behind William Sawalich. And look at Fenhouse now on the charge. He's going to dip to the inside of Sean Hingarani to take over third. Just behind him, that battle for eighth and ninth. Zachary Tinkle going to follow him through to take over the eighth position. So a good move by Zachary Tinkle right there. Take advantage of one of the lead lap cars, passing both of those drivers for position. Take over that eighth spot. But let's see what Luke Fenhouse has here. Fenhouse now just 1.7 seconds back. I have a sneaking suspicion. Luke Fenhouse listening to both Shane Huffman, his crew chief, and Lauren Rainier, his spotter, has been saving his tires the first 50 laps of this run, hoping they would have enough rubber to get up there and battle with William Sawalich here in the final 50. That 28 car starting to come to life here as we approach the final quarter of the Pensacola Arca 200. He's got six tenths of a second in hand over Jake Finch and Luke Fenhouse inch by inch car length by car length starting to reel in our top two. It has been all William Sawalich tonight but we did see the final 10 laps of that opening 100 lap segment tonight. We did see that 28 car make a late charge with some pressure on William Sawalich. And again, we approach the final quarter. That 28 car starting to come to life. Didn't look like Fenhouse really put up too much of a fight as those cars worked their way past once we went back green flag racing like he was a man with a plan he said you know what I'm going to let you guys go out there and be a rabbit we'll let you go out there and race hard and burn the tires off how about that move Zachary Tinkle is going to sneak to the inside of Tanner Arms move Zachary Tinkle up to seventh Impressive performance tonight. 
by the young man out of Speedway, Indiana. Good look at Tanner Arms with the number 95. Compass RV Toyota. Man Motorsports. And there's Luke Fenhaus. We talked about it inch by inch, car length by car length. He has caught Jake Finch. And now the battle is on for second. We have 50 laps to go. The final quarter has now started here at Five Flags Speedway. Talked about the experience Jake Finch has here at Five Flags Speedway, a two-time sportsman division champion here at Five Flags. We've talked about the experience that Luke Fenhaus has. Doesn't have quite as many laps here at Five Flags Speedway, but he is the reigning Cars Tour Pro Late Model Champion. A lot of short track savvy in the cockpit of both of these automobiles. And right now, Fenhaus going to turn it hard left. He's inside of Jake Finch for second. And now the question is, does Luke Fenhaus have enough to reel in William Sawalich as we have less than 50 to go here in Pensacola? We're going to keep an eye on that interval. Last time by, it was nine tenths of a second. This time by, eight tenths of a second. Right now, Luke Fenhaus in the fastest race car on the racetrack. We've talked about it all night long. Tire management going to be key on this abrasive asphalt here at Five Flag Speedway. Talk about the old proverb, the tortoise and the hare. William Swalich was the hare tonight. He jumped out to a big lead. Now here comes the tortoise. Luke Fenhaus, slow and steady throughout the first 50 laps of the second half of this race, has put himself in contention. Now six tenths of a second, the interval between first and second. Benhouse took a big bite out of the lead that time around. And the lead that was once measured in seconds, now measured in car lengths. Less than 10 car lengths now separate. William Sawalich in the number 18 from Luke Fenhaus in the number 28. Pinnacle Racing Group, a brand new team organized in the offseason. Shane Huffman stepping away from the Brett Holmes Racing team that he guided for the last handful of years. He took Brett Holmes to the Arc of an Art Series National Championship. He hopped on board. He purchased some equipment, including race cars from GMS Racing. Good race cars that carried Daniel Dye to second in the Arkham and Art Series championship standings. And now here comes Luke Fenhaus on the charge. It's three seconds and one point. Now it's three car lengths. Less than 40 to go here at Five Flags Speedway. Fenhaus now stalking William Sawalich through turns three and four.
We saw Fenhouse do this in the final 10 laps of the opening half. And now he is right on the back bumper of William Sawalich with just about 35, make it 36 laps remaining. The season opener for the Arkham and Art Series East here at Five Flags Speedway. We saw Jake Finch and Sean Hingarani make an early charge here in the second half trying to get up there and compete with Sawalich, but they couldn't make it work. Luke Fenhaus playing the tire conservation game. Now throwing caution to the wind as he tries to track down Sawalich here in the final 35 laps. They're going to work to the outside of Zachary Tinkle, and here's Tyler Reif in the picture as well. Tinkle giving up the bottom side of the racetrack. Top two will sweep around to his outside, down in turns one and two. Now Sawalich dropping back, or excuse me, extending his lead, Benhouse dropping back. About 10 car lengths now. And you have to wonder, did he use up the tires trying to race his way up? Or is he just cooling his jets? We'll have 30 to go this time around. Just 30 laps remaining here in the Pensacola Arca 200. Clean and green all night long. Only time we have seen the yellow flag, the halfway point here tonight. Benhouse had dropped back about 10 car lengths, and now he's starting to reel him in a little bit. Riding the elevator, up and down, up and down. Picks up a couple of car lengths, gives up a couple of car lengths. Still five cars on the lead lap. So Wallach and Luke Fenhouse, your top two. Jake Finch and Sean Hingarani, they've dropped about four seconds behind this battle for the lead. LeVar Scott about a half lap back in fifth. Tyler Reif in the 41. Tyler holding on to the sixth position. Tyler two laps down to the leaders at this point. Actually make it about 1.9 laps behind the leaders at this point. He is about to go down a lap for the second time here this evening. Luke Fenhouse. Not giving up any ground to William Sawalich. 25 laps to go. Final 25 laps here at Five Flags Speedway. Appreciate you joining us for the final dash to the checkered. Let's see what happens here as we've got traffic directly in front of the leaders. This has been where Fenhouse has made up a lot of ground tonight. It's going to take a big bite out of, the, out of the lead that time around. They put Ed Pompa another lap down. Ed back in the 10th position in the number 10 car. Still following in the tracks of Tyler Reif in the 41. Tyler's got that car running pretty well here in the late stages.
Cubs. Luke Fenhaus in the number 28. Stalking William Sawalich. Does he have enough to get up there? A challenge for the lead here in the final 20 laps. Tyler Reif sliding his way through turns three and four right there. Is that going to impede William Sawalich? Tyler's been running some pretty competitive lap times. Sawalich running a 19.15. Tyler Reif running a 19.24, but he's going to give up that ground right now. Good sportsmanlike move right there by Tyler Reif. He moves out of the way, lets the top two slide underneath. They will go to battle for the win here tonight. 19 laps remaining. Here's the other Loudon Jackson racing entry right there. 46 car, RJ Smotherman. He also gives up the top side of the racetrack. Let's the top two slide underneath. Benhouse about a half second back. Made a charge a couple of times. It is closed right up on the back bumper. But he hasn't been able to get up there and challenge for the lead just yet. Does he have enough to get up there and make one final charge? They sneak underneath Tanner Arms in the 95. Tanner looking to pick up his second ever top 10 finish here in the Arkham Menards East. Currently back in the eighth position. Good night for the driver of the number 95 car as we see Sawalich flash past the start finish line one more time. 15 laps to go. This has been a very quick pace here at Five Flag Speedway tonight. Just one caution flag. That coming at the halfway point for the five-minute break. Otherwise, we've been clean and green. And after 186 laps, that's the gap between first and second. And there you see the gap. The growing gap between second and there's our third place driver, Jake Finch. Jake has dropped some eight seconds off of this battle for the lead. Twelve to go this time around. Ed Pompa one more time. Ed having a good night tonight. Sitting in the 10th position, but he's going to give up the track to the leaders right there. Let them go by. Continue their battle for the lead. And look at this. Fenhouse again starting to reel in. William Sawalich coming to 10 to go next time by. It's go time. If he's got anything left in that 28 car, it is time to show your cards and make it happen here tonight. A couple of more slower cars to the inside of the racetrack. Zachary Tinkle is going to let the leaders zip by to the outside as we get the 10 to go signal this time around. Benhouse getting that car a little sideways off of turn two. He can see him. He is right there. He can see that back bumper off of turn four. Nine to go this time around. LeVar Scott directly in front. LeVar trying to hold on to the tail end of the lead lap. He's going to move to the outside and let the two battling for the win move to the inside. And there's Luke Fenhaus. Two car lengths off the back bumper with eight to go this time by. Wallach starting to stretch it out a couple of car lengths this time. Little more breathing room. We come to six to go. Don't forget, folks, we'll give you a couple of nominations for the Reese's Sweet Move of the Race tonight. You can vote starting tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. at 
ARCA Twitter page, at ARCA underscore racing. Five laps remaining. Will we see a sweet move out of the driver of that number 28 car? We've got four to go. Just two miles of racing remain here at Five Flags Speedway. Sawalich with about eight car lengths in hand down the back stretch. Biggest gap we've seen between the top two here in the final 10 laps of this one. Three to go this time around. Let's see if Fenhouse can make one final charge at it. Two to go this time by for William Sawalich. Sawalich starting to stretch it out ever so slightly. We will come to the white flag this time around. Final lap for William Sawalich. Who's it going to be here at Five Flag Speedway? Sawalich with the advantage down into turns one and two. Benhouse up the racetrack. Sawalich clean and green into turns three and four. He'll be looking at the checkered flag this time around. William Sawalich in his Arkham and Art Series East debut. Going to go to victory lane. Sawalich wins it here at Five Flags. Great run by William Sawalich leading every lap here tonight to pick up career win number one. And a terrific performance by Luke Fenhaus in the number 28 car to come home in the second position. The only thing he missed tonight was the burnout. <laughs> Dominated in practice, in qualifying, led every lap, but we'll let him slide. 16-year-old William Sawalich picking up the win in his first ever start here in the Arkham Menard Series East. Something that hasn't been done since 2017 at Watkins Glen International when Will Rogers went to victory lane in his first ever East Series start. William Sawalich will celebrate in victory lane. A first start, first time winner. The 14th driver in East Series history to win in his first career start. I see Jesse Punch standing by down in victory lane, so we'll head on downstairs to hear from our winner, William Sawalich. Picking up the win here tonight at Five Flags Speedway. We'll send it on downstairs. Uh, I absolutely have been trying to keep an eye out for Reese's sweet moves, and we literally did not have. William Sawalich, the 16-year-old from Eden Prairie, Minnesota, is your winner here at Pensacola tonight. William, congratulations. Absolutely dominating performance. What's going through your mind right now getting out of the race car? Yeah, I just can't thank the Joe Gibbs Racing team enough, and we had a really fast uh, Toyota Camry here, and can't thank Sound Gear Starkey and uh, TRD enough. And just want to thank all my supporters, and uh, it was a fun race. Thanks to my competitors, and uh, team worked really hard to get this car as good as it is. William, when we talked before the race, I said, you're in a championship winning race car. What expectations do you have for yourself? And you said, hold on, let's just get through today before we set expectations. What do you think now? Yeah, for sure. I think the championship is in play as good as that race went for us. Um, I think we can try and dominate everywhere we go. Congratulations on the win tonight, William. Thank you.
That's William Stowalich kicking off the Arkham Menard Series East season with win number one. And what an absolutely dominant performance tonight. Led the field in practice, won the general tire pole in qualifying, led every lap on his way to a win in his first ever East Series start. What a night for William Sowalich. There's a handshake from race promoter Bob Sargent. Got that general tire neckband on upside down, William. Got to work on that. <laughs> First time ever in victory lane, though. So we'll let him, again, we'll let him slide on some of the protocol. But, uh, yeah, very excited young man celebrating his first ever Arkham Menard Series East victory. I see Jesse wandering down there to uh, our second and third place drivers. So we will set it on down trackside to hear from our runner-up finisher tonight, Luke Fenhouse. Yeah, we'll just lay out and wait. Copy that. Luke Fenhouse currently chatting with the track PA here at Five Flags Speedway. So as soon as he winds down, we will send it on down track side to Jesse as we see victory lane ceremonies continuing for William Swalich here at the start finish line. And we will send it down track side to Jesse Punch. Down here with second place, Luke Finhouse. Luke, both you and Pinnacle Racing Group making your ARCA debut here this evening. What were you able to take away from your team and the potential you guys have this season? Yeah, potential is a big word. Um, just because, you know, we've, we've been repairing cars and getting them ready to go for the season uh, for the past couple months. And now to have two cars ready to go for the rest of the season, it kind of gives some, you know, gives some work off my guys' shoulders. And um, it's good to come in second. It's hard to, hard to be that close and finish second. But but um, just these guys work so hard, and I'm proud of their effort, and um, we'll keep learning and move on. That's Luke Fenhouse, runner-up tonight in his ARCA East debut. Great performance by Luke Fenhouse and that brand-new Pinnacle Racing Group team. A lot of expectations out of this group throughout the rest of 2023 as we wait to hear from our third-place finisher tonight, the hometown hero, Jake Finch, coming across the line in third. Look at that trophy. Nice piece of hardware going to go home with William Sawalich here this evening. And we will head on back down trackside to hear from third place, Jake Finch standing by with Jesse Punch. Third place tonight here for Jake Finch. Jake, how did this run this evening compare to the expectations you set for yourself before the race? Yeah, obviously not not as uh, good as we wanted it to be. You know, we had a good car. Um, obviously came here to win. I don't really come here for anything else other than that. But I uh, had a really good car. Proud of everybody at Phoenix Racing. I think it made a, probably a little bit too many mistakes. Had a little bit of trouble with brakes there, but uh, that's not really a great excuse. So uh, just need to be a little bit better next time and uh, learn something tonight. So Outlook for the rest of the season? Yeah, just keep uh, running top five, top three, and uh, we'll probably bang one off to keep doing that. So we run all the races, finish all the laps, and uh, try to be there at the end. That's Jake Finch, your third place finisher this evening. A lot of confidence out of that young man. Love it. Just got to run all the laps and we'll bang one out for the end of the year. I love it. That is a lot of confidence. Clean and green all night long here at Fine Flag Speedway and the Joe Gibbs Racing Team. William Sawalich celebrating down in victory lane. Let me take a look at our unofficial results here tonight. Sawalich, your winner. Luke Fenhouse in second. Jake Finch, Sean Hingarani, and LeVar Scott rounding out your top five. Tyler Reif coming home in sixth. Zachary Tinkle, Tanner Arms, RJ Smotherman, and Ed Pompa rounding out your top ten. 
as we get set to head up to Dover Motor Speedway, the next race here on the Arkham Menard Series East calendar. But we will be right back here next Saturday night. Arkham Menard Series West Racing coming up. The Irwindale Speedway coming up next Saturday night. West Coast Stock Car Motorsports Hall of Fame 150 coming your way back here at Flow Racing. Don't forget you can check out ArcaRacing.com for all the race info, race entry list, and event schedule. Upcoming West races coming your way April 22nd from Kern County Raceway Park. June 2nd up at Portland International Raceway, the first road course race of the season. The second road course coming up a week later, the General Tower 200 at Sonoma Raceway coming up June 9th. A return, return trip to Irwindale Speedway on July 1st. Shasta Speedway coming up on July 29th. Evergreen Speedway August 19th. Ah, the bull ring at All-American Speedway, September 30th. And then the actual bull ring at Las Vegas Motor Speedway coming up on October 13th. A return to Madera Speedway for the first time in several seasons, October 21st. And we will wrap up the 2023 season at Phoenix Raceway coming up on November 3rd. Well, folks, we certainly do appreciate you joining us here. Live coverage on Flow Racing for the Arkham Art Series East season opener. William Sawalich going to Victory Lane. First of many trips to Victory Lane, I do believe, for this young man. We'll see how the 2023 season plays out. For everybody here at Arca Racing and Flow Racing, we certainly do appreciate you joining us. We look forward to having you with us right back here next week for Arkham Art Series West Racing from Irwindale Speedway. My name is Charlie Crawl, everybody. Until then, so long, everybody.